Welcome to the second week of our midweek studies. I'm Lockie and I'm really excited to bring you around the second week uh, as we go through Isaiah. Uh, Basically, we jump in here in chapters 13 to 23 um, in a section where um, it was very common for prophets to denounce the nations. And that's what we're seeing in this section here. Um, It's about all the nations surrounding Judah. But it's not directed towards them. It's directed uh, to the nation of Judah. John Golding, in the uh, theology of the book of Isaiah, uh, said this. He said, the nations addressed were generally those in direct contact with Judah. Neighbors that were potentially enemies or allies, Judah would be inclined to be fearful of these nations that are larger and more powerful. Isaiah encourages them not to fear by letting them know the disaster that's coming upon those nations. So in this moment, Isaiah is encouraging them, you know, um, don't align with these big noters, uh, these big nations that are trying to build themselves up as more powerful than Yahweh. You know, trust in God in this situation. Don't trust in yourself. Don't be self-absorbed, um, but put your faith in Jesus, in God in this situation. Um, I encourage you, pause and read chapter 14, verses 4 to 20. In this, we see um, what some people believe to be Satan, you know, an attack and eventually Satan's fall. However, at the time, the Babylonian Empire was rising to power and it was such a symbol of evil and oppression uh, that this is what they may have been talking about here. You know, in Revelation later on in the Bible, uh, even though they're referring to the Roman Empire, they call it the Babylonian uh, because it was such a symbol of evil and oppression. However, another possible meaning of this section of the Bible is that they were talking about the Canaanite god uh, whose name was Athtar. Athtar was this god who tried to ascend to the throne of the gods in Canaanite um, theology uh, to the throne of Baal. And when he sat on the throne, his feet couldn't reach the footstool, so he came back to earth. Um, Athtar was the god, he was called the luminous one. But when he returned to earth, he ruled over earth and then eventually possibly the um, netherworld. But there's another possible outcome that is highlighted in verses 13 and 14 um, when it says, I will, I will, I will. And it's possible this section is talking about our own perpetuation of sin. And in this moment, Isaiah is encouraging us not to put it upon ourselves, our self-absorption, but to trust God. In this section, I will, I will, I will, humans are trying to say, um, God may tell me to do this, but I'm going to do it my own way. And God will judge us for all of that. However, we see this moment of positive inclusion for all the nations in this section of the Bible, especially Egypt. Um, It's incredible how God turns judgment into salvation. Um, Egypt is referred to as my people. Assyria is referred to the work of my hands and Israel, my heritage. We see that although uh, it's ridiculing the nations and saying trust in God, he's actually bringing salvation and inclusion to all the nations there. Now I encourage you break out to four groups. You're each going to read about one nation. And if there's four people there in your group, uh, just individually pick a section. For the first section, we have uh, Moab, chapter 15, verses 1 to 16, and also verse 14. The second nation, Damascus, chapter 17, verses 1 to 14. Then Babylon, chapter 21, verses 1 to 10. And then Tyre, chapter 23, verses 1 to 18. Read all these passages and then ask the question, what does Judah need to know about these nations and why? We now move on to the next section, chapters 24 to 27, and it turns apocalyptic. You may think of a zombie apocalypse. I think of the Book of Eli with Denzel Washington slashing people with swords. I know that's not very Christian of me, but that's where my mind goes. But what we think of as apocalyptic was completely different uh, for Jews uh, back in that time. 
The Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines it as Jewish and Christian writings marked by symbolic imagery and the expectation of an imminent cosmic cataclysm in which God destroy, destroys the ruling powers of evil and raises the righteous to life in a messianic kingdom. Now, in this section of chapters 24 to 27, we move into talking about the whole world rather than just uh, these specific nations with the culmination of the day of the Lord. And through these sections, there's uh, this hope uh, that judgment will come and that this judgment will result in God taking control of the situation. Uh, You know, Jews at the time believed that when this judgment came, uh, God would look after them and take control. Pause and read Isaiah 25 verses 6 to 8 and also chapter 27 verse 13. How do you respond to the description of this universal banquet? And what do you look forward to most of this idea? Pause and read chapter 14, verses 4 to 20. So here we have uh, our next section, chapters 28 to 39, and it's talking about international events. Um, Hezekiah is going absolutely nuts. He's making uh, political policies with allies such as Egypt and Babylon. And in chapter 28, verse 18, Isaiah is basically saying, like, what are you doing? I warned you against this. It's like in Survivor, and he's telling him, bro, don't go with these guys. I warned you. They're going to screw you over. That's what's happening in the situation right now. And he's continually warning against them. And there's this uh, repetition of a lack of trust of God um, from Hezekiah. But worse than this, it's this dependence on himself, this pride that he can do better. Read Isaiah chapter 29, verses 13 to 17, and chapter 30, verse 10 to 18. Do you think they wanted Isaiah to prophesy popular messages? Now read Isaiah chapter 36 to 39 and 2 Kings chapter 18 verse 17 to 19 and also verse 37. In history, uh, Sennacherib was actually a man. He wrote an account of Hezekiah and in it he says, As to Hezekiah the Jew, he did not submit to my yoke. I laid siege to 46 of his strong cities, walled forts, and countless small villages in their vicinity, and conquered them by means of well-stamped earth ramps and battering rams. Himself I made a prisoner in Jerusalem, his royal residence like a bird in the cage. Hezekiah's illness uh, progresses through this shift from the power being with the Assyrian Empire to the Babylonian Empire. And it is clear that Judah now has a new biggest threat. So Hezekiah, uh, through his wealth and power, tries um, to show the new Babylonian power uh, that he is a threat and not to be dealt with. So as it relates to us, do we have moments where uh, we're trying to be prideful and show our strength, show our power, uh, show our good deeds to other people? And what does it mean to trust God? Have a discussion around that question.